Welcome back to the Delaware Way. We continue our conversation with Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester. Two committee assignments, Education and Workforce and Agriculture, yeah. which is which is great for Delaware, especially right. the southern part of the state, because I don't right. think people realize how much of the Delaware economy is in agriculture. Exactly. But is it new to you? You know, it's interesting. I have had forays with agriculture through many years. Um, when I started off as a caseworker in a congressional office years ago for Tom Carper, Senator Tom Carper, when he became governor, I was assigned the Department of Agriculture to review it, to understand the issues, to help with cabinet you know, choices. So it, there's been this intersection with agriculture throughout. Uh, but um, it's everything from chickens, and some people would say we have as many chickens as people, you know, here. And it also is urban and rural. It's nutrition programs. Oh, it's yeah. SNAP. It's biotech. So I'm on the biotech and research subcommittee. And, and so that's important because we've got Dow DuPont here, and we've got, you know, uh, chemical companies. So it's, it's a very diverse committee. And our state hasn't had uh, representation on it in a long time. We, we traced back to... Uh, 1857, one of the, the first Congress people who actually was represented there. Um, and we just had a roundtable with farmers, the farm ag community this week, in addition to the higher ed community. I met with university presidents this week as well, because education, I'm on the higher ed subcommittee. And we talked a lot about college affordability during the campaign as well. Yeah, Delaware is, seems to be in the forefront. I mean, it seems like the, the federal government would do well to take the Delaware model and take it to the federal government. Oh, yeah. I mean, between the SEED program and, and some of the other creative things that, that those university presidents were talking with me about yesterday, it, would, it was an incredible and dynamic conversation. And as this year, we're looking at the higher ed uh, bill, and we're also looking at the farm bill. So again, part of the goal was to try to find a place where we can have impact here at Delaware. I've purposely been trying to minimize Trump mentions in the interview because he seems to dominate everything and, and your election was important in and of its own and should stand on its own. But I want to bring him up now because okay. you made the decision to, to go to his inaugural. You just made the decision not to boycott it. And you just said a moment ago that you look forward, I think were your words, you look forward to his address to Congress. Why did you think it was important for you to be there and not boycott as many of your colleagues did and why it's important to be there when he speaks to Congress? You know, I take very seriously um, the role of oversight for Congress. That's, I feel, one of our primary roles. And um, even as we look at some of the challenging things, like the in interference of the Russians in our election, transparency and vetting and making sure there aren't conflicts of interest, I believe you have to be at the table to be able to have that kind of oversight. Um, so when I talk to people about my decision to go, it was for Number one, participation, because I'm one of only seven in the country, Congress people, that represent a whole state. I don't, I don't represent a neighborhood or a community or a district. But for me, it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't about celebration. I was there um, to represent Delaware, and uh, that was an important decision for me. And we got a lot of positive feedback from folks that understood that, you know, that was what the goal was. The reason why I say I'm interested and, and looking forward to hearing what the president has to say is because if he's going to be the leader of this country, he's got to change the things that he says and bring up, start bringing us together. But also we have to look realistically at what can be accomplished. Do you think you can play a role in getting him to change the way he thinks about things? I think everybody's playing a role in that right now. A lot of people who are coming to town hall meetings, people who are call making calls, I think all of us have a role to play. You know, for me, like I said, I'm going to represent Delaware as strongly as I can, take our ideas to D.C. and hopefully bring back resources and good legislation here in Delaware. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm one person. So if Donald Trump made a phone call and said, I'd love to meet with you at the White House to discuss your ideas, you'd be there. That's a great question. Hmm. You know, how, how do you how do you say no? You know, I'm not going to come meet the president. But I do think because you're representing Delaware. But I do think that's that's why you don't say no, um, because I'm representing Delaware. But I do think that I have to still be true to myself. I have to still be strong in the convictions and the values that we have. And and so um, when you show up, you don't leave your convictions at the door. I don't. I don't. Some might. 
but but I don't. And I think you know Delawareans have have, have said that we we tend to be a community of people who like to bring folks together and get things done. That's what this is about, is getting things done. But you also can't sacrifice, you know, again, your values. One of the values for me is how we treat each other. You can't call people names. You can't try to separate and divide and then think that you're going to have a positive outcome. I mean, it, this, is, this is about the healing of our country. This is about the moving forward of our country. And so for me, uh, that's what I would love to see in words and in action, that kind of leadership. Well, you've been elected at a fascinating time. What a journey you're going to have. Congratulations thank once you, again, and thank you for the conversation. Lisa Blunt Rochester, the first African-American and the first woman to be elected to Congress from Delaware. We continue the Delaware way right after this.